Hey guys, welcome back to Knowledge Highways HTML Tutorials Part 13, I think. I think we're on 13, hopefully. Um, and today we're gonna start going over forms. I think this is, I'm gonna have to split forms into two episodes, but this is really the end of the line, guys. We're almost done with HTML. So uh, let's start out by doing our usual. Doc type is HTML. Oh gosh. Um, make a HTML element. And da, 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 da. I really probably don't need to do this anymore for you guys. You've probably got the gist by now. Oh gosh, I cannot actually type right now. I need to move about my stuff. Professionalism at its best, I know. Uh, <laughs> the way that I have my microphone set up, sometimes I have to move it out the way to actually reach the keyboard. Okay, um, so we have a body ready. We don't really need a heading, a head element for this, so let's just work in the body one. Um, okay, let's get started. So, first things first, what's, well, we're trying to make a form here. Do you know what a form is? Well, let, let me explain what a form is. So, you know whenever you see like a login on a web page and you're like, hmm, that's, that's uh, got a little box for me to type into. Well, that's that's a form. That's a basic form. <laughs> Did you like my description? Basically, a form is anything where the user inputs information, fills out information, and then submits it, and then the website takes care of it. For example, a registration page. I don't really know why I bothered getting up paint for this, but for example, you could have some really dodgy looking box where the user types in information, or you could have a radio button, which is one of those little things that you select, is either select or not selected like this I guess um, there are also things like well there's buttons uh, you could have like a button that you can press I know this looks exactly the same as the text entry box but we will sort that out in a minute so anyway you get the idea let's let's get doing this so you guys can get an impression we're gonna go over a few of the basic tags today I guess uh, let me move my shiz around okay um, so to let's start out with the form tag, because that is how you start any form. Um, you open up a form element, and then you go and close it as well by uh, underneath. Uh, it works kind of like a body tag, I guess. You put everything in the form within here. And the reason for that will become clear later on. Uh, I'm tabbing again. I've not spoken about this in a while, so if anyone's forgotten, tabbing does not affect anything to do with the web page. It's just so I can understand and see things better. You should also do this because it will help you uh, view your web page, well, view your source code easier, make it easier to make changes. Anyway, we've spoken about that before. So let's add our first tag which is going to be an input tag and um, the way this works is input the input tag is used for all sorts of things like checkboxes submit buttons um, text areas for the user to enter in so the way that you tell the browser what type of uh, input that you're going to be using is by using the type attribute so type in type and then equals Quotation marks, and within the quotation marks, we're going to start out with text. Uh, now, this is just a text box, but you'll see that in a minute. So, we one other thing you're going to want to do is give every input thing that you use, every input tag that you use, input thing is not quite the language I should be using when I'm teaching people. Uh, any input tag that you use, you're going to want to give it a name. Now, the name should be unique from all the other inputs because this is when you're later trying to access this information, you access it via the name. So you can give it whatever name you want, like baked beans if you want. Oh gosh, terrible spelling. Um, but if you wanted to give it a proper name, generally, for example, if you were making a place for the user to put in their name, you would type username as the name. Now, don't worry if you don't get this right now. This is another one of those things that we will go over later on when we do PHP or JavaScript, where we will fetch stuff from forms. But for now, know that you should just give it a name as good practice and that type equals text will give you a text box. So let's save it and see what happens. Boom! We have a text box. 
where you can type things into. Very nice. You probably can't see that very well uh, with the color scheme. I apologize if you can't see it, but yeah, there is a typeable text box there. So, I kind of want to give it a name beforehand. So, just go ahead and type in username. Oops. Username, colon, and then space. You could make this whatever you want again. This is just for usability sake. What we're doing is, well, Type username colon a space just before the input tag, still inside the form, save it, and you'll see. See, we've just added username uh, before the input tag. Now this is fairly common sense, this is no rule or anything, this is just how you would go about adding this. And I'm going to do it from now on just so you can see things. So, what if we wanted to add a password? And you know how on websites, when you type in your password, it's not just in plain text? If it is, that's kind of terrible because people can look over your shoulder and read your password. Uh, usually it's all in bullet points. Uh, well, the bullet point symbol instead of the actual characters you're typing. Well, you can do that too. By uh, Let's first type password just for usability's sake and space and then let's add another input tag. So input, this time we're going to type type equals in the quotation marks I'm going to type password. Now make sure you type all this letter for letter otherwise it's not going to work. Uh, and then I'm going to give it the name password again just for good practice for later when we actually do use this information. Gonna go control S to save and ta-da! We have a password. Now what happens if we type in? Mwahaha! Now you will never get my password. Okay, so I kind of want to format that, so let's use our break tag that we learned a while back, which is basically like pr pressing enter on the keyboard. Uh, so BR, uh, and I'm going to do it again over here, BR. This is actually a really good place to use a table, but I'm not going to complicate things by adding a table just yet. We might do that in the future as an added bonus episode. I'll show you a full web page made in HTML and we'll go over that. But for now, uh, let's, let's try something else. How about a radio button? So, uh, usually we put the radio button before what it's to select. So let's first put in our input tag and then put type, well, put your type attribute and set it equal to radio. And this time, uh, give it a name of, for example, um, I'm just going to call it type here, because, or actually, uh, fruit, let's call it fruit. And then, and then for the thing that sets radio buttons apart from what we've done so far, is you also have to give it a value. Um, now I'm going to type apple for the value. Now the reason why we give it an, a value on top of uh, this stuff is because you can have multiple radio buttons under the same name, i.e. you could have multiple radio buttons with the name fruit, all with different values, and when the browser, when you go and look for the value of fruit, it will give you, <laughs> when you go look for the name the input that is assigned to the name fruit, it will return the value of the individual input that is selected. This is getting very complex as I'm saying it aloud. It did not seem so complex in my head. A better way would be to show you guys how this works. So I'm going to type in apple after it for usability sake, as we've been doing with username and password as well, maybe without the space. And then I'm going to add a break just for later and let's save it and test it out. See, now we have an apple. Now you can click it and you can only click it. <laughs> so, how what, what happens if... Well, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and add another radio button. So give it the name input as the tag name. Type is radio. Name is... Let's give it a different name, just so you can see what happens if you don't give them the same name. So let's call it something. And then let's give it the value of, um, no, I'm feeling orange. 
<laughs> picky, I know. And I'm going to type orange just for usability's sake, just so that the text orange comes up. And then I'm going to type br for break, uh, tag br. And let's go. What happens now? So what if we want an apple? Well, we click apple. What if we want an orange instead of an apple? Oh, it selected them both. And now I can't select them off. What do we do? Well, if we make the orange radio button, the one that we assigned the value of orange, uh, if we t change that one's name from something to fruit, which is the same as the apple uh, radio button, and save it, and refresh, now you can only select one of them. And if you select one, it will deselect the other. Um, so, in this case, in the case of radio buttons, the name is basically a good way of grouping together radio buttons into one selection. Uh, so, well, yeah. <laughs> Sorry if this is confusing, this is one of those things that's really difficult to explain. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here. I haven't made a very good job of explaining it right now. If anyone has any questions, go ahead and just email me or do a comment. Do a comment. Uh, post the comment below asking about this, and I will reply as soon as I can. If I don't reply, then do another comment, and I'll see it eventually. <laughs> okay, that's going to do it for radio buttons. Let's do another, which is going to be, again, this time we're going for checkboxes. So again, we're going to add another input tag, and we're going to give it the attribute type equals, and then check box. This is all very intuitive. It's quite nice that way. And the same thing applies to checkboxes as radio buttons. You have to give them the same name if you want to group them together and the value is something else that you have to set on top of the name. Uh, so let's give the name uh, color. So imagine we're wanting to give a small list of colors and we want them to be checkable. Uh, now let's give it the value of green. And then outside of the tag, I'm going to type in green. And then I'm going to type a break. So let's go over it, that again, because I wasn't really explaining very well as I was typing it. We're going to use the input tag. And we're going to give it the attribute checkbox. And then we're going to give it the attribute, the name, color. And then we're going to give it the attribute value, which we'll set to green. Um, you can set both color and green to whatever you want. So you could say like shoes, and then you could give a brand of shoes as the value. All sorts of things, whatever you feel. Um, now I'm going to add another one, which is exactly the same. Just type is checkbox. And name is equal to color, again, because this is the same group of checkboxes. And I'm going to set the value equal to red. And then I'm going to give it the name red, just so we can see. And save that, and then let's go, let's see what happened. Boom! We have green and red as checkboxes now. Now if we tick red, we can tick that, and if we tick green, we can tick it at the same time. That is the difference between checkboxes and radio buttons. Also, you can deselect uh, checkboxes. So that's how that works. And just for example's sake, just so you guys, I know you guys completely understand, we're going to make two more radio buttons below that, I guess, so it's not confusing. Um, I'm going to type in input type equals radio name equals, and this time I'm going to give it a different name, so like for example, uh, running out of things, <laughs> uh, toy, okay, so we're going to make a group of toys, now let's give it the value, the first toy is going to be a train, and then I'm going to type train, break, let's add another one to our toy selection, so input type equals, oh gosh, radio name equals uh, video game. Uh, oh, sorry, that should be toy, my bad. So toy, 
because it's still in the group of toys. And then value equals, and then we'll put video game. Then over here, I'm gonna type video game. And then a break tag. And then I'm gonna add one more just so you guys know that you can put in more than two tags into one, uh, <laughs> more than one, two radio buttons into one group of radio buttons. So I'm gonna give this one the value of what other toys are there? Uh, Teddy. <laughs> That's a toy, right? Let's call it Teddy and type break. And now that I've done all that, just for example's sake, you can see that if we select train, then it has its own selection. If we select Teddy, then Teddy takes away from train and uh, is its own selection. If you select video game, then Teddy is deselected and video game is selected. But, however, if we select orange, that does not deselect video game. And if we select apple, it only deselects orange. Now this is because they are two separate groups. This is under the toy name, and this is under the fruit name. Okay, hopefully I've made that obvious enough. Painstakingly hammered that into your brains uh, for now. So, let's do one more input. Well, one more type of input tag. So again, write input, and then type type as the attribute equals in quotation marks, and this time we're gonna type sub submit. Now, what this does is creates a button that we can click to submit. So I'm saving that. Now we're going to test it. Submit query. So, does nothing right now. I will teach you how to use that at a later point. In fact, I'll teach you now. But first of all, let's look at the fact that there's a button there. And it's called submit query. But what if you want to change that button to something else? What if you want to make that button a register button? Well, all you have to do is change the value. Now make sure you're not changing the name. It's the value that you want to change when you're changing the text that is on the button. Remember that, because it will confuse you later uh, if you don't. So for the value, I'm going to type register. Save it. And now the button says register. So now we have learned a whole bunch of input tags. Let's learn one uh, attribute of the form tag, which is action. And we're going to set that equal to and then two quotation marks. And in there, what you do is you write the address of where you want this form to send the user when they click the submit button. And uh, okay, so let's let's do that. Let's add something like, for example, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.google.com as per usual. <laughs> Save it. And now, if we refresh our page, when we click register, it will now send you to google.com. Also, it will pass google.com all the bits that you entered. So let's go back. Let's actually put some stuff in here. So Jules, secret, oh, oh goodness, secret password. Let's click Apple, I like red and green, and I like video games. So register, and now if you look very closely, you're gonna have to put the video in full screen and HD and stuff to see this, but you can see after the web address that I entered into the action uh, attribute in the form, uh, there's also all this extra information, like username equals jewels, and password equals secret password, and fruit equals apple and color equals green, and color equals red, and toy equals video game. So all the stuff that I put in that form is added to the web address. There's also a way to hide all this information, but we'll go over that another time because this tutorial is already long enough. So. That is basically the summary of what that does. So you have input tags that you give types and names and values, and you have the form which you give an overall action, which is the web address that the will be navigated to when you click on the submit button. Okay, that's gonna do it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time for another.